This is the Pinarello Dogma F10. And this is Cannondale's System 6 High Mod. Both of these bikes can be classed as super bikes, truly the world's most premium racing machines. And what better place to come than Alta Badia in the Dolomites to test these bikes out. Over recent years, Alta Badia has become a top destination for even the most demanding of cyclists. And that's owing to the fact it lies here in the heart of the Dolomites, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's also right here in these mountain passes that the queen of cyclist sportifs, the Maratona de las Dolomites, was born way back in 1987. So, the climb we're doing is the Paso Gardena that starts in Colvera at the bottom of the valley and climbs to the top, passing through Col Fosco, which is where we are right now. So all together, you'll climb about 600 meters on the Paso Gardena. The steepest bit of this climb happens immediately after Cal Fosco. So you'll hear me, shift, where <laughs> hear me shifting down because we're about to start Just climbing. Just about to start doing that. As you leave the town, it's hairpin after hairpin will stretch away in front of you. And you were saying something very interesting to me the other day about the Dolomites and their difference to the Alps. Yeah, and it's one of the reasons why coming here is completely different styles of riding. In the Dolomites, all of your elevation is gained on the straights, whereas in the Alps, it's the hairpins which are steep. So here, the hairpins are relatively flat, but you suddenly get that steepness kicking up into these nice flat sections, which in a way, is a little bit easier to deal with. A little bit, <laughs> maybe. So it is truly a place to come to test your legs. So, the Pinarello Dogma F10. When it launched, it was something of a sensation. It's got a sort of hybrid mix of aero bike and lightweight climbing bike that makes it truly special. Its weight is just 6.8 kilos in this build that I'm riding here, which is an absolutely beautiful Campagnolo Super Record 12-speed mechanical group set. It's got flat back tubing profiles, which make it more aerodynamic. The flat back and concave shape to the down tube helps hide water bottles out of the wind, giving you a bit more extra speed for no more effort. There's an incredibly high-end carbon fibre that goes into making this frame. Some of Pinarello's finest grade and it feels brilliant. There's a kind of suppleness to the ride that's absolutely wonderful. It takes all the harshness out of it but it still feels really responsive and stiff when you're climbing. But my favorite thing about this build, it's the Pirelli tires with the little yellow logos, because there is nothing more Italian racing car than that. So obviously this is one of those times where we're having to ride and talk at the same time. First time for you, isn't it? First time in this region. Yeah. First time in the Dolomites, in Alta Badia. That looks a lot easier than what we're it doing. It does, I was gonna say. Every now and again I go, I really wish I had a motorbike or even just an e-bike. Um, we're also coming to a crawl and we can see the road stretching away ahead of us. It looks beautiful but it looks quite long.
Cannondale System 6 was the American company's first attempt at building an aerodynamic road bike. The frame itself uses truncated aerofoils almost all over it to create that aerodynamic profile. Even the handlebar and stem have been developed specifically for this bike. It looks like a complete one-piece system, but actually it's made up of two different parts, and that gives it a bit more versatility than a normal one-piece. And if we go back to the origins of this bike, that's the wheel set. This is the Knot 64, and they look a little bit different to most normal wheels. What you find here is they're slightly wider than your tire. This is designed to disrupt that airflow, to create a faster wheel set that cuts through that air and makes you as efficient as possible. The fork of the System 6 has also been designed specifically around disc brakes. This has allowed Cannondale to create a more aerodynamic shape. This comes with the brand new SRAM Red ETAP Axis group set. That's the brand new 12-speed wireless group set. And oh my God, this thing is amazing. Truly, there's no other bike that's worthy of the name Superbike than Cannondale's System 6 High Mod. When I say that this is a bucket list area for me, I'm not exaggerating. I've been wanting to come here for years and it is absolutely spectacular. Oh, I, know, I know. Like as if I wasn't tired enough already, my breath has been taken away by the vistas that we're surrounded by. We're here because we're riding bikes and this is the best reason to be here. Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking, looking past the van now. The Gardena is quite literally a wall. The hairpins <laughs> are maybe only separated by 15 meters. Yep. It goes hairpin, into hairpin, into hairpin, and it is just ramps straight up. This straight we're on now is a lovely relief, and I think we'll be missing it in about a kilometre and a half's time. Now, and I don't mean this lightly when I say that this is probably one of the most beautiful areas I've ever been to. Come with me, come and look at this. This is why we're here. You know, you get to ride in an area as spectacular as Altabadia, with these views everywhere. Absolutely amazing. So this particular part of the Paso Gardena is where the hairpin bends get started for proper and we're rounding this bend and it's only 30 meters until we're going around the next, next bend one. and then the next one and then, and then the, the next, next one. one back to back bends the whole way up this last part of the climb and it makes it truly picturesque yeah and the great thing as well is you know we started at around about 1500 meters down in the first village but this gains over 550 meters, so we end up over 2,100 meters at the top. And the great thing with that is all of that elevation pretty much comes in the last half. Yeah, it does really ramp up towards the end. And as you can see, starting to nose our way into the snow line a little bit more now. made it to the top of the Paso Gardena. It's absolutely it's a little freezing bit cold, isn't up it? there, well, isn't it? You can see there's a lot of snow here and you go through the shaded bit there. And it's probably minus something. It's yeah. May. Yeah, it's really, really cold, but it is a beautiful climb. Oh. There's views for days around here. It takes the breath away, takes the pain away. That's the best thing about it. And then when you look down, you realize I'm riding the equivalent of a proper, proper super bike here. We're in that privileged position where you can do that. You can come to a place like this. There's nothing better. Your Pinarello just looks amazing. And as you rightly said, those tires, it, it's the tiny Perfect, little things really that just make a big difference. Perfect. And again, you know, I've, the speed machine here. Yeah, it is. It's, it is an aero bike. So you sometimes think, why would you come climb into a place like this on an aero bike? But as Cannondale rightly said, this thing flies yeah. up hills. 
it's, it's incredible. And actually, when you get to the top of the Paso Gardena, you're spoilt with the Soslong straight ahead of you. It's absolutely amazing. It's like nothing I've seen before, really. What a view to finish on. So from the gorgeous Paso Gardena, we're going to say uh, goodbyes. But if there are any superbikes you have dreamt of riding in a place as special as this, then please do let us know in the comment section below. And for more great content, please do like and subscribe our channel as well. But until then, we'll see you next time. Porsche here. That's beautiful. That is amazing. <laughs>